Okay, so this is... I didn't go to SolidWorks World 2009, but this is the first shirt I got. One of my colleagues went to SolidWorks World 2009, and he gave me the shirt. He didn't want it. So, thank you, Ryan, wherever you may be. This is what's tricky. I mean, looking at this shape, we could kind of start out with a solid block and then just cut away from it and then bring in some fillets. So 2010, this is actually the first year that I competed in Model Mania at SolidWorks World. Phase 2, yeah, I remember some of this. Okay, so kind of erasing Phase 2 from my mind right now. Just take a look at Phase 1. Let's see what we got to do. Um, and think about the last two years. We've had to use simulation. Well, we've already had a peak. We know a design change is coming, so we're going to need to be quick um, in the model geometry creation here. And I think one technique, you know, building up to Model Mania 2010, uh, of going over through the previous challenges, I really like this technique of looking at building backwards, right? Looking at this drawing and thinking about remove a feature, remove a feature, remove a feature. So material, applying the material is important. Fillets can be tricky, although in this case, it looks pretty straightforward. We just have some continuous edges. We don't have any fillets coming back in on each other. R2 typical. So let's take those fillets out of there. What do we have next? Here we go. We're starting Model Mania 2010. This is a part of the Model Mania Live series. So again, thank you for joining me on this quest as we prepare for SOLIDWORKS World 2017. Let's start the timer. So let's start with this front plane. Essentially start with a circle there, um, circle over here, and two lines tangent to either double click. So that hold grabs a tangency there. Well, except I missed it on that one, did I? I think I did. Tangent didn't apply. So let's just take a peek at those. Bring in some dimensions. That value, we're given a radius there of 25, so 50. We're just doubling this in our heads. I could type it in. Uh, radius there of 12, 24. We have a center center distance there of 100. And we know the centers there are horizontal. And that gives me my fully defined sketch, so we'll extrude this um, mid plane essentially doing all these profiles yeah that looks right um, a depth of 60 let's go to the top plane sketch here so this is where we can use just a center line to come out some now a dynamic mirror um, can I do it here I want to select that um, dynamic mirror entities. So I had to search for it, I didn't see it in my toolbar, but it adds these little two lines here. So now what I can do is just start um, sketching on this. So right on the midpoint there, come up, come over some distance, transition into an arc, go tangent, transition into another arc, go horizontal, down, over arc there and come into that. So a lot of references here. Um, this could easily break and blow up on me. Um, but let's take a look at what we can do. We know that those are going to be tangents. What else did we not get that's tangent? Let's take a peek here. Things are going to kind of be underdefined. But the nice thing here is I only have to worry about one side. So this will be 8, this back line here is 14, um, we know the distance from there to there is 23, and we can already kind of see where we're missing some tangencies. So I think this line and that edge we can make collinear. 
the diameter there is 20. Diameter of that, oh, wrong bag, click, is 10, that's radius. That's 10. You know, the offset here is 8. That's 20. Essentially just digging around for as many references as we can get. Um, so we have another one from, oh, we want a virtual sharp. So what I can do for a virtual sharp is hold control, grab these two lines. There's a way to do this new, but just grabbed a point. That's the first one that's on my head. So I can dimension to that virtual sharp, that's 35. Um, we have another one here. Oh, what is that mouse click? I'll have to come back to you guys on that one. But there's a keyboard shortcut on this. So let me grab that virtual sharp, there it is. 75, fully defined sketch, right on. So let's do an extrude. We're going to do mid-plane. We're not going to merge the results. Um, essentially, it's going up high enough already, so we have that interference. So let's click OK. We're then going to take these two things, do a combine. We're going to do what's common, so it shows us a preview of that. We're then going to go to our front plane. Something's not right. Oh, my dimensions are wrong. Here we spent all this time dimensioning to the wrong deal. All those dimensions are to the center. Um, the center of that. Okay, so I can drag and drop that handle to there. Drag and drop that handle to there. That value is 35. This value is 75. Much better. Exit sketch. That's looking right. Okay. Front plane. I wonder if I could have done those extrude cuts there. Oh well. We have a size of 36. We're going to put in a center line here over to there. Also do one horizontal. That is 45. And then let's grab a uh, three point. One, two, three. Width of that is 10. Uh, those two are parallel and would they dimension that out to there hold shift gives us that of 40 we can just do some dirty trim in here to clear those out why are those underdefined oh that's supposed to be Coincident. These are supposed to be symmetrical. There we go. And here, so we have this offset entities there. Is it giving, giving me anything there? is 8, offset entities there of 8 and reverse, now let's do a 3 point arc, well we know, well, let's drag these out, 
merge those points, merge those points. We know that that and that are concentric. And the distance between the two is eight. Um, we have a full round there, so we can do what? We can do just a three-point arc again. You know, that's tangent, that's tangent. We should have some dimensions here. Well, we have a hole there of 12. And we have a minimum distance, so I should be able to hold shift between the two. Eight. Fully defined sketch. Let's grab our sketch fillet tool. These are five. And we have that one and that one. Features, extrude cut through all, both. Okay. And fillets. So I think we're looking really good. Uh, size of two. We essentially have that outside edge, that outside edge, that inside edge, and this inside edge. A material of ASI 1020, 1020, apply, close. Here's our fillets. Oh, one edge didn't apply. That one. I'm still missing some fillet edges. That looks better. So looking there. I think that's good. So let's hit pause. We're at 10 minutes. Wow. Okay. And here's where we get thrown a nice big loop. Um, so the side profile is the same. We essentially have a new profile here at the top and we need to fix our fillets. That's what I see there. I mean, I think I need to just redraw that sketch. So let's see how fast we can do that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to worry about redoing that. So let's define what we know. That's 14. That's 8. We already know that that's 60, so we know that is 8 as well. Um, those two are parallel. We have a distance between them of 8. Love that pre-selection there this time. Just having those entities pre-selected and getting in there. We know that the length of... Ah, remember it's from here to there. 35, center to that point, 75, what are we missing, radius of 10, that gives us our fully defined sketch, but we have some more fillets that I didn't sketch in there initially, uh, that one's 10, these two are 20, That gives me my fully defined sketch. Let's click OK. Exit sketch. Yep. Pretty much our cut extrude failed because we're missing a reference. But does that matter? I'm not going to care because <laughs> I think it's good. So totally all of our edges are bad. Let's just reselect them. Could use that advanced selection there, but oh well. That one, that one, that one. So I think that does it. That part is looking good. We were able to make that changes in fair time. It was just that initial sketch. I don't know. I spent too long on it. Seven minutes left. Um, we have a simulation study. So tools, express, simulation express. I like this one better. It's just I think it's a little bit faster. 
because um, again we just have simple steps to do add a force to those two it's 500 load to each face each face so we choose this per item selected direction to the top plane reverse direction of 500 and again per item 500 load to each of these faces for a total of a thousand newtons so we change yeah 500 each for a total of a thousand two faces okay next uh, same material is applied yep yep run simulation so my measure and solver coming up on off screen there but that's how quick it is yep that's how it should deform factor safety 2.379 show displacement or what do we need to record just the factor safety and maximum deflection maximum deflection of 0.189 meters complete nailed it well thinking back to how poor I did in 2010 on this model have I redeemed myself no <laughs> we're gonna redeem ourselves when we get up on stage at SolidWorks World 2017 just tackling and killing destroying and winning at Model Mania so thank you for following me today uh, hopefully you learned some tips and tricks maybe some ways how not to do something uh, overall I think I did pretty good uh, this one was pretty interesting with the uh, merge tool and how we could combine those two bodies those two different profiles and get them together um, overall I think I did good let's compare to the SolidWorks solution video and we'll see you tomorrow doing Model Mania 2011 have a good one